Well, good evening and welcome to Deep Springs Wednesday Night Bible Study. John 3.16, arguably and possibly the first verse you ever memorized, especially if you grew up deep wood Southern Baptist like most of us did. That was by far the first verse that you memorized. It's hard to argue that it's the most important verse. Now, there's a whole lot of the Bible that's important, okay? A whole, and it, there's more and more and more, okay? So we're, we're good to know that it's, but there's none no better, I'll just say, I will honestly say that. Uh, it sums it up, and we're going to look at uh, 16 through 21. There's a, 16 is important, 16 is great, 16 is where it's at, but there's other verses that are attached to that. Last week I thoroughly enjoyed singing and dancing with you all while we sung to this little light of mine. That's a rendition that Stacy found and it's pretty cool and catchy. Well, this week we are blessed to have Miss Izzy. Izzy has offered to, uh, to sing a song and after she sings, the youth and kids will go downstairs and uh, we'll stay up here and look at John 3.16 through 21. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Good evening, God. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. And Father, as, as we begin the season of Easter, I pray that uh, you prepare our hearts, just as you did at Christmas for the coming of the Christ child. I pray that you prepare our hearts to be ready to tell the story that that child grew up into a man. His name was Jesus. And he went to crucify be crucified on the cross because he so loved this world father it worked out this way what a timely message to start off our Easter service bless Izzy as she sings and bless us as we hear for in Jesus name that we pray amen The 
All right, Izzy, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, uh, I just, I knew, she, I just asked her and she said yes. And uh, thank you for your willingness and your servant heart and your most importantly using your talent for the Lord. And uh, I think I have it on authority. Izzy, you can sing anytime. So there you go. John 3 16. I'm not going to, to read it, but we're going to walk through it. Uh, it's as, that is obvious as anything, and uh, it's the start of the Easter season. Anybody know what today is? If I, if I did this, would you know? Yes, Miss Linda. Miss Linda, if I had a prize, you'd win it. Ash Wednesday. Uh, uh, the ashes to ashes, dust to dust, uh, from where we were made. So it's beginning of Ash Wednesday. It's important. We talked about it a little bit last year. It's the... 40 days till Easter. Well, it's actually like, what, 47? Because you don't count Sundays. And so we're at 40 days to Easter. It represents what? That's right. Jesus being in the wilderness for 40 days when he started off his public ministry. Uh, being tempted by the devil three times. And ultimately saying, devil flee from me. And then walking out of the wilderness. Uh, a revived and a ready-to-go man, and that's where we begin our season of 
Easter. Of Lent is the a proper word, but it's the season of Easter. How appropriate do we kick off the season of Easter when we start talking about John 3, 16? Folks, if I was smart enough to plan it, I would have messed up on the dates. I'm not saying anything was... Per, I'm saying God put this together that we're kicking off our Easter season with this verse. Let's quit wasting time, and uh, it's not wasting time, it's important time, but, uh, but let's get into it. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Undoubtedly what? The first Bible verse you ever learned, one of the most important Bible verses, Hi, uh, hi Noah, and uh, it was, uh, by the way, Life Church, there's nothing like Life Church. Come on, come on. But, uh, but for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I, I, I preach from the King James every week. I read from the King James every day during my Bible study. I read from the King James. I also read other translations. I'm not going to lie. We've talked about this. There's no secret there. I read other translations. As a matter of fact, I picked up a translation from one of you all that you all read. Uh, so there's other ways, but anytime I quote, especially John 3.16, I quote the King James. Why? Because it was infiltrated in me, it was instained in me, and I'm thankful that it was. It needs no explanation. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. That he gave his only son. Now, I've been blessed with two daughters. You've been blessed with two daughters. Of course, since I've got two daughters, that means Stephanie has two daughters. Uh, some of you all have not had kids, and that's okay. I hope and pray that one day the Lord blesses you and you get to, to hold that precious child or children in your lap and, and in your arms and laugh. There's nothing we have bedtime at our house. This is a squirrel, so bear with me. We have bedtime at our house. There's a reason for going it. And up until Saturday night, Friday night, the girls have slept together. So, help me out, 13 years and 11 months, they've slept together. They've slept in the same bed. They have a bond because A, their brothers, their sisters, and their twins, they have a bond. They've wanted to venture out. They've, now they're sleeping in their own bedrooms. So the other night, they were chit-chatting back and forth. And it was just beautiful. And it, we didn't get on to them. We just kind of let them chit-chat and talk. And they was laughing. And we got, couldn't really make out what they were saying. But the, it was good to see that interaction. As a parent, it's one of those things you just let go in the moment. Say, you know, it's past your bedtime. But hey, you're having a good time. It'll be all right. God experienced that with Jesus. He experienced Jesus growing up and Jesus being the oldest of his brother and sister probably talked to himself a whole lot. And God got to listen to those conversations. God got to hear Jesus talking back to him. So he had a bond with his one and only son. But whosoever believeth in him should not perish. The word perish there is a reference to hell. Is a reference to eternal life. Okay, it's a reference to the place that we refer to as hell, refers to the gnashing of teeth and the, or the, the never quenching, never ending fire. So that was that parish, the parish of the soul. It's from ashes, we were from ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We were made from the dust in the ground. You know, God created everything and said it ain't good, it's good. He said, I need to make it perfect, so I'm going to put male and female on here, and we're going to make this thing perfect. So he drew us in the ground, and poof, blew air into our nostrils. I said poof, that was like a little disrespectful, but you know what happens. He spoke existence into the world. A lot of people said, I don't believe in the Big Bang Theory, and I had a school teacher say, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. My eyes got this big. I was like, well, i got to hear this. She said, God spoke and bang it was. So there you go. Uh, there you go. But uh, it says, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. While this old physical body wears out. I've got a mark on my shin from today where this old physical body wears out. 
and you get your feet tied up in some rebar and you take a step and you probably shouldn't have took a step and you wind up on the ground. Uh, so this old physical body wears out and things happen. But with putting our trust and faith in Jesus, we have everlasting life. Jesus said, what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So you get that verse. That verse is important. If you don't memorize any other verse, memorize that one. But there's more to every story than just one verse here and there. I don't like cherry-picking verses out of the Bible. If you cherry-pick verses out of the Bible, you're going to get in trouble. So remember, the whole passage of John chapter 3 is what? That's right, Shay. John, or Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Jesus and Nicodemus were, were there having this conversation. We talked about that last week. I'm not going to bore you to death telling you who Nicodemus was. Go back and listen or meet me after church. So he says that distinct verse. He talked about being born again and Nicodemus was confused. And Then he says, whoever believeth in him shall not perish of everlasting life. I love verse 17. Verse 17 is an eye opener for us. A lot of times we read 16 and stop. Okay. Slow down. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. Huh. Then why would He send Jesus? The greatest there ever was. The perfect human being. The, the picture perfect. The model how to be a good citizen. How to be the ultimate Christian. How to live your ultimate life. If anybody had a reason to... To come with a sword, it was undoubtedly Jesus. If anybody had a reason to get up here and say, we need to prune your vineyard and we're going to start by cutting off your head because you don't know how to live and act, he would have a right to do that. He did. He would see somebody with a sin and he has the right to say, yep, you was caught in that adulterous sin, so we're going to line you up and stone you because I have the right to do that. But Jesus did not choose that path. He did not condemn the world. But that the world through Him might be saved. Jesus did not come to point out every bad thing you've ever done. He just came to die for every bad thing you've ever done. Jesus did not come to point out every bad thing that you've done. Jesus just came to die for every bad thing you've ever done. We call that thing sin, transgressions, indiscretions, disobedience, whatever you want to refer to it as, but let's call it what it is. It's sin, and it puts a barrier between you and God. That the world through Him might be saved. And again, Jesus said, Well, down the way, the truth, and the life. He that, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Do you want to be condemned of every transaction? Do you want to be condemned of every sin that you've committed? No. No. I don't want to be committed to damned of every sin I've committed today. Okay? Much less you take this whole life. Now, and again, it doesn't give us a free pardon to sin. It just frees our pardon from sin, okay? So we got to don't want to be condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Why? Thank you for asking. Because he does not believe in the name of of God's one and only Son. Because he does not believe in the name of Jesus' only Son. So, do you want to be condemned of your sins? No. Good answer. Then we need to put our trust and faith in Jesus. Remembering, though, there's a whole lot more that comes with it than salvation. But yes, it starts with salvation. Oh, verse 19. But this is the condemnation. I like the, the, the wording here to, to be verdict. This is the verdict. 
All right? Jesus didn't come into the world to, to condemn the world, but here is the verdict. Here is the meat and the potatoes. Here's where it's at. Here's the condemnation, if you will. That light is came into the world. Who is the light? Glad you asked. Jesus. Jesus is the light. And man loved darkness rather than the light. Hmm. I've told you about me growing up in a house full of two older brothers. It wasn't very fun when the lights went down. And to this day, and I did it back, I don't know, a few weeks ago. I had to go downstairs in the basement. <laughs> I don't know why my daddy done this to me. He done it, he didn't realize he did it to me. He put the light to go upstairs over here probably 20 feet, okay? I'm a grown man. I've been in that basement. I know there's nothing down there. But let me tell you right now, it's 280 pounds. gets to move in one direction. You ain't going to stop it. So I flip the light switch off because if you, leave, if you leave the light in my house, you get in trouble, even as a grown man. So you, right? Thank you. you turn the light switch off and you run to the bottom of the steps. Then you get to the bottom of the steps and you can see the light coming down from upstairs. And then you walk up, walk up the steps like you own the place because you're a big, bad macho man because you survived the dungeon. I don't like the dark. It's not talking about, though, the literal dark. It's not talking about when the sun goes down. And by the way, in about 10 days from today, we get daylight savings times back. Whew. Our government gets a lot of things wrong. We get that one right. We need to just stay on that. There's my two cents. There's my political statement of the day. I don't care what the cows will learn to adjust. But, but the, it's not talking about the darkness of the literal darkness. Now, Mamma would tell you don't be out past 10 o'clock because nothing good happens past 10 o'clock. I say... Don't be out, period. Nothing good happens while you're out unless you're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. But the darkness it's referring to is the darkness of the soul. Okay, the darkness of the soul. But let's compare it to the literal darkness. When your house gets broken into, do they break in during a broad daylight? No. They sneak in at night when you're not there. They watch the clock. And they know when you're not there. And they go in the middle of the night so their neighbors don't see you coming in. We live in darkness. Because if I live in darkness, then what? You can't see what I'm doing. Here's the beauty of it is. Here's what we do. Here's the reality of what. Here's the darkness that we live in. We live in the darkness. And we don't want Jesus we don't want the one true God looking down from heaven and seeing our sin. So we live in this darkness. We live in the darkness. We, live with, we want a cloud put over our head so Jesus can't see through the clouds. That's the darkness of hiding our sin. It's hiding everything inside of us that we don't want seen. But here's what we do a lot of times. We keep that sin right in here. You can't see right here. You can't see what's down in here. You can't see what's over in here. It's hidden. And then we want our good stuff to shine out. We want the goodness to shine out. But Jesus called himself what? The way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the light of the world. Jesus don't look at this physical body. He looks at our spiritual body. He looks at what's going on inside our head and our heart, and He listens to what comes out of our mouth. And if the three aren't lining up, the head, the heart, and the mouth, we got problems. But that is the darkness. We think we're hiding. In reality, all we're doing is playing games. But people don't like the darkness because it exposes their evil deeds. It exposes their evil deeds. Hey, meet me at sunset. Hey, meet me tonight. I'll meet you tonight. Okay? Because I don't want to see, I don't want the world to see what I'm about to do. Meet me at sunset. Because I've got to hide a, I've got to hide a, a, a sin. For everyone who hates the light, for everyone who does evil, 
For everyone who does evil hates the light. Why? Why do they hate the light? Let's, let me say it this way. For everyone who hates, who does evil, hates Jesus. Jesus called himself the light, so it's okay. So everyone who does evil hates Jesus. Why do they hate Jesus? Because he exposes their sin. Neither cometh to the light, and they run and hide. Folks, I'm seeing this alive and well in the churches today. And let me say this, let me, let me re in the church, not Deep Springs, in the Christian church, in the Christian church, in the church of Jesus Christ, in the church of the one true God, I see this all the time. And to be honest, I see it here. People do not want to come to the light. People don't want to come to Jesus. Why? Because their deeds will be exposed. I had to learn that as pastor. I thought people hated me. No. You don't hate me. No. You don't hate me. Quit running from the light. Can we just quit running from the light? Can we just quit? Okay, you stumped your toe in the middle of the night. You said something you shouldn't have done. Stop doing that. And let's move on. Okay. I'll, I'll, we're all adults. Bear with me. Okay, there's a pretty co-worker. He's easy on the eye and she's pretty to look at. There, I covered both of us. We look at her or him and say, whoa. Okay, that, that's wrong. Don't act on it. And quit doing that. Quit doing that. And he don't have to expose our evilness. Don't have to expose our evil deeds. Doesn't have to expose us. We just need to step into the light and be good Christians. This is where the whole Bible comes into effect. Let me tell you what you do. It's a real basic concept. Love the one true God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's over and done. And while you're at it, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? Don't worry about the petty stuff. Don't sweat the petty stuff. He died for those sins. It's okay. It's not okay to sin, but it's okay to it's okay when we do. Don't beat yourself up. I tell you right now, I'd rather have a church full of sinners than a church full of saints any day. Some of y'all didn't hear me. I'd rather have a church full of sinners than a church full of saints. So quit running from the light. Quit running from the Lord. Quit running from the church. Come on back. Bring us somebody with you because they're struggling too. Verse 21. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light. See, I told you, John 3.16 is important. But will 20 and 21 not open up your eyes? I guess you can put this the same, this passage the same way. 16, 17, 18, and 19 can kind of all go together. 20 and 21. If you ain't got... Meet me after midnight, preacher. I'll come to your... Meet me at 10 o'clock. It's good and dark then. Nobody will see me. Nah. Let's meet at 10 a.m. You know what I'm Around East Tennessee... Uh, the official time is a little after 12 noon. So we'll call it high noon. Meet me at high noon. The sun's at the furthest top. It's good. That's the most when the most light there is. It's actually about 12.15-ish, 12.20 during the summer months. That's when it's at its best. That's when there's the most light exposed on where we are here in East Tennessee. Meet me at 12 o'clock because I ain't ashamed to be out in the light. I don't have to have a secret meeting. I don't have to meet at a secret location. I want to meet in the light. Because if I do have something going on in me, I want the light to find it. 
if I am a bad husband, if I am a bad employee, if I am a bad preacher, if I am a bad human being, I want Jesus to expose it so I'm not living in sin separated from Him. I want to go into the light. Do you want to go into the light? Or, I'm sorry, you don't have no sin in your life, do you? You don't have no sin in your life. Hmm. But Jesus said, whoever lives by the truth will come into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Let me sum it up by saying this. If you've got some sins in your life, if you've got something in your life that doesn't need to be there, if you've got something in your life that needs to be hidden from the world, step out into the light. Step out into the light and let Jesus expose that sin. Maybe you're in a good place. Maybe you're in the place that you need to be. And you don't have no sin in your life right now. You're living a pretty good life. We all sin, but there's no mate. There's no sinning on a, a consistent basis. You've got this thing wrapped up. Yeah, that car cut you off on the interstate the other day and you blew your horn and waved at them real good. But maybe things are good in your life. Then come out into the light. Come out into the public places. And let the world see what you're doing. We've got enough people running and hiding. We need some men and women and children of God to stand up and boldly say, I love Jesus. I'm not doing this for credit. I'm not doing this for notarization. But everything I do needs to point to Jesus. What about you? Do you know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior? Do you need a Savior? Are you running and hiding? Or are you coming into the light? Just imagine old Nicodemus for just a second. Just imagine old Nicodemus standing there listening to Jesus. Now, at this particular time, I think it's safe to say that Nicodemus was not a believer. Okay? After this conversation, Nicodemus becomes a believer. I think it's John chapter 14. We'll get to that sometime. I think it's John 14. I'd have to double check that. But uh, he, is, he is identified as a believer in Jesus Christ. But Nicodemus heard this for the very first time and became a believer. You've heard it for the thousandth time. And that's if you're under the age of 20. Okay. If you're an old man like he is, <laughs> you've heard it 10,000 times, okay? I've probably said it 200 times myself in the last three years, all right? What about it, church? John three sixteen. There's so much more here. But are we going to be a Nicodemus? Or are we going to be something else? Are we going to answer the call? Or are we just going to stay hid in our own, little, our own little private worlds and think what I've got is enough? What you got is enough. But what good is it if you don't take it to the world? Be blessed, stay well, and most importantly, church, serve on. Serve on. Thank you.